Hi everyone, David Aragoni here with Craig Milkowski, and we are taking a look at one of two stakes races at Keeneland on Saturday. It is race seven, the Perryville Stakes, going seven furlongs for the three-year-olds, and pretty competitive field here. Horses coming in from a multitude of different directions. Actually, the number one soup and sandwich, who's favored on the morning line, is coming out of the Kentucky Derby, uh, seeing a horse making a big cut back in distance. But let's throw up the field for this race, Craig, because it's a pretty competitive affair, and we've got some horses that are stepping up into stakes company for the first time that have run some big speed figures but they're going to get a class test here yeah it is i was thinking as i was looking through this this could even easily be a graded stakes race when you look at the speed figures and consider these are open three-year-olds and, and it's uh not an easy race for sure yeah, you see three to one on the morning line is Soup and Sandwich. He's got some questions to answer coming back off the layup. We'll get to him in a little bit and we'll see how he gets, uh, what kind of trip he gets because he's a horse that has shown some speed in the past going longer distances. And I think that's the case for a lot of runners here that they might have to work out a trip in a race that does feature quite a bit of speed as we take a look at the time form US pace projector. Plenty of horses that want to be forwardly placed towards the outside of the starting gate, like the number eight, Cool Quest, and the number seven, Irish Unity, Boca Boy, the number two, has done his best running towards the front end. So feels like a horse like the number one, Soup and Sandwich, Craig, and even the number six, Pipeline, who's been forwardly placed in his races, they could have to come from a little bit farther off the pace than they're used to in this one. Yeah, this one's a real puzzle. Even the pace projector didn't give a lot of clues. I mean, the, the algorithm is what it is, and it puts them where they're going to be. But it just said there's a lot of horses turning back, and that's not really a strength of the pace projector because you never really know what the tactics are going to be from the riders and the connections. So uh, I think the pace projector gives us a good starting point, but I wouldn't be surprised if those horses are closer than what's shown here. And the same even goes for the outside horse in Runway Magic the nine. Yeah, I think you make a really good point. The pace projector is only as good as the prior form, and you've got a lot of horses that have competed at different distances than the seven furlongs in the past. So maybe they are capable of running a little bit faster. We've seen horses like Soup and Sandwich and Pipeline be much more forwardly placed in their prior sprint races, and maybe that'll be the case here. We'll see. Uh, let's begin with Pipeline of the major contenders, the runner for Chad Brown, who's listed at four to one on the morning line. We'll take a look at his last race at Saratoga. This was just him breaking his maiden, so he's taking a big step, step up in class from from a maiden race to Snakes Company, but Craig, he couldn't have run much faster or been much more impressive in this race. No, this was a big one. I think uh, it's the fastest time form U.S. speed figure from the last race. He ran a 116 in RPPs. If you use the weight adjustment, it's going to show as a 118 because he's actually had some time off. And he's even been flattered a little bit by the horse that finished third that day, Cody's Wish, who came back to, to win a race with a good 116 speed figure. So just a really good effort from him and one that probably merits moving in the stakes competition. Yeah, I know this was a horse that was a little bit frustrating for the connection at the beginning of his career because he had trained so well coming into his debut and was kind of disappointing his first two starts. But when they put those blinkers on, as you highlight there, Craig, uh, really, it's like the light bulb just went on for this horse. He ran well going a mile and an eighth, which might be too far for him and cutting back to this seven furlong distance last time he ran that huge speed figure. And if he runs a number like that in this race, even with the step up in class, he's probably going to be tough to beat. But as we were saying, he's going to have to work out some kind of trip because there are a lot of horses in here that want to work out that same kind of stalking forwardly placed trip to pipeline another horse that we mentioned at the top of the show that's going to be taking a big class drop and turning back in distance is the number one soup and sandwich who is coming out of the kentucky derby let's take a look at his race two back though when he prepped for the derby in the florida derby finishing second to known agenda and craig i thought this was a pretty game effort for a horse in just the third start of his career yeah, he was coming out of a uh, pretty easy allowance win at Tampa and jumped into the Florida Derby where he actually got bet a little bit down to 12 to 1 in that field, which was a little bit surprising. But he backed it up that day, only being beaten by known agenda. And even though he didn't run well in the Derby, he showed that their early speed, he showed that they was no fluke as he was actually within a half length after about six furlongs of the Kentucky Derby behind eventual winner Medina Spirit. So he definitely had some speed. He's shown a bit further back, but I would imagine that they're going to urge him a little bit when the gate breaks because he doesn't want to get shuffled back too far.
Yeah, obviously the big hurdle for Soup and Sandwich isn't necessarily talent, but it is this layoff. And Craig, you found this very specific statistic for Mark Cassie. Uh, he has good numbers overall coming off layoffs, but with this situation, three-year-olds turning back in distance off this kind of layoff, not the best numbers. Yeah, I usually try to find something pretty specific to today because broad stats can be a little misleading. And this was one of those cases. I, I was looking for three-year-olds who showed promise early as soup, soup and Sandwich did, get a layoff, turn back. And it just doesn't look like they've geared up all that much. He's only two for 21 with a miserly 1.07 ROI. And when you compare that to Horses who don't meet those criteria, it's just a, a much worse performer. So I, I don't, am not a fan of him in here. I was like uh, pretty happy to see he was actually the morning line favorite when that came out this morning. Yeah, another horse that is coming out of a pretty tough spot is the number five pick and time as we take a look at his last race from Parks, the grade two gallant bobbin. That horse that's on the lead right now, that's the likely favorite for the Breeders' Cup sprint, Jackie's Warrior, who just decimated the competition here. So pick and time was picking up pieces for second place in this race, but he's still not a respectable speed figure, Craig. Yeah, but you actually uh, said it exactly right. And the reason I, I kind of pointed out this race, I bet pick and time that day uh, to, to complete the exacta behind Jackie's Warrior. And it was particularly for that reason. It was a small field and he was literally the only horse in the field of five who had ever shown any ability to pass horses. And I just have a feeling that 115 time form U.S. speed figure is kind of a, a it's because of the circumstances more than the talent of the horse. And I would expect him to regress more to those low hundred type speed figures. So uh, as happy as I was when soup and sandwich was the morning line favorite, I was equally as happy when this one was the, the second choice, because I really don't like either one of these two in this spot. They're, they're both talented horses, but I just don't think this is a race that sets up well for them. Yeah, it's a really interesting race. I'm not quite sure how they're going to bet it. If a horse like Pick and Time is among the short prices like you, I would be a little bit against him because I don't totally buy that speed figure last time. He got a 115 time form US speed figure for that runner up finish behind Jackie's Warrior. And like you were alluding to, I think he just kind of got carried along by that superior horse a little bit, picking up pieces per second. So I wanted to go in a different direction. A couple of other horses from Kentucky that I think are worth mentioning are two that just might be improving at the right time. The number eight, Cool Quest to kind of like Pipeline is coming out of a maiden victory. He earned his maiden diploma going six furlongs at Churchill last time. And as we take a look at his past performances, uh, Craig, he might just be one that's getting better at the right time because that 116 time form US speed figure puts him right in line with a horse like Pipeline and the others. Yeah, it does. It was a big maiden breaking effort. And once again, I think you have to point to the blinkers as something that's made a big difference. When he first tried them, they put him on turf and, and who knows if he really handled turf that day, but first time back on dirt, uh, he exploded to that 116 figure. So really big effort. And, and I think he's a serious contender in here. He's uh, just going to have to work out a trip. Uh, whether they'll go or not, I, I would imagine they will. I think that's the trip they should go for for him because he was pulling away through the stretch last time. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure what to do with him. You see those blue color coded time form U.S. pace figures in his last race. And when you watch that race, he really did have uh, an uncontested lead the entire way. There was just nobody in there that could really challenge him. It was a lower quality field than the one that Pipeline beat at Saratoga. So I think that contributed to the margin of victory. He still ran a fast race. I'm just, I just question whether he can be as effective when he has some horses breathing down his neck early and he is going to get that early pace and class test moving up in this Perryville. A horse that I'm a little bit more interested in, Craig, is the number nine, Runway Magic. Orcs is coming out of an allowance victory at Churchill Downs last time. That was going a mile, but he doesn't strike me as one that's going to have any problem turning back to the seven furlongs here. And as you highlight, he's a horse that might have just really stepped forward since returning as a three-year-old and doing so as a new gelding. I don't care about that turf race too back. That was just a prep, uh, but he really improved getting back on the dirt last time. And I thought that was a nice effort. 
Yeah, it's uh, we've highlighted a couple of equipment changes. And as they say, I guess this is the ultimate equipment change. And it certainly seemed to turn the light on for him. Again, we had an intervening turf race that I don't think really means a whole lot, but he uh, catapulted to that big 112 speed figure and a tough allowance. I, I really like these turn backs when it's a one turn mile, uh, like it is at Churchill to the seven furlong. So I think he's a strong contender in here for sure. He should be able to work out a trip, whether he's able to sit close or even, you know, if he drops back four or five lengths, shouldn't be much a problem given his good outside post draw. And as we throw up our top picks for this race, you can see that I did go with that horse that we were just finished discussing, the number nine, Runway Magic. I thought that 112 time form US speed figure last time, while it's just off some of the top contenders in here, I think it puts him in the mix. And he was forwardly placed that day, but he's a horse that's come from further off the pace in the past. And I wanted somebody that could do a little bit of running from off the pace in this race. And he just feels like a horse that might get a little bit ignored on the tote board uh, because he's got that slightly lower speed figure. I think, though, his trainer, Tom Drury, does an excellent job. And I expect this horse to run well on this spot. And he's 12th one in the morning line. I'd be happy to get that kind of price on him. Craig, you went for the number six pipeline, who I agree is very dangerous in this race. Yeah, I think uh, I'm not sure we'll get that four to one, but maybe we can get three to one or, may, you know, maybe I'll be wrong. As we learned a couple of weeks ago, the morning line, uh, it, it's definitely not the easiest thing to do. I know I learned that myself. So uh, I'm looking for a big effort from Pipeline. I just was really impressed visually. I think the blinkers have made the difference and I think he is the horse to beat here. Number six, Pipeline for Craig, and the number nine, Runway Magic for me in the Perryville Race 7 at Keeneland on Saturday. Thanks for watching, and good luck if you're playing this weekend.